hard to imagine this is how 2020 started. But across the world, dozens were falling ill with a mysterious virus that would ultimately change life as we know it. It has not yet become a global health emergency. It may yet become one. We know the World Health Organization just to, to declare this a global health emergency. Depuis quelques semaines, notre pays fait face à la propagation d'un virus. This is a new disease and none of us has immunity to it. Many lives will sadly be lost. We can all agree that this past year has been pretty tough and challenging. For almost a year now, our lives have been put on hold. Everything we took for granted just slipped away, from the way we work, the way we commute, the way we eat, the way we interact with each other. Making short-term plans has become a luxury. We can't plan anymore. A day looks like the next, and we all forced into this monotony. And finding purpose in this global mess has been very hard and such a big trigger for anxieties, depression and, and mental health issues. And of course, the topic of global health has never been so intense. Stay at home, protect our NHS and save lives. We will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods and will stop all social events we have realized how people's underlying health issues can put them at higher risk than others. 1.7 billion people live with underlying health issues that put them at a much higher risk of contracting severe symptoms of the COVID-19. For weeks now, Paris's main landmarks have been quiet, but still the number of deaths from coronavirus continued to rise. This virus is a brutal reminder of the current state of the world's global health. The 10 main causes of death in the world are all health issues. Studies and research rank the side effects of prescribed drugs as a very important cause of death in the world. Western countries are home to some of the best healthcare in the world. Any patient in an emergency who needs prompt medical treatment is better off than those living elsewhere. However, healthcare is now a multi-trillion dollar industry. The mainstream medicine of today is based on treating patients who are ill with expensive drugs, radiation and operation. And the offshoot of those treatments are side effects that have a huge negative impact on our body's defenses, but we haven't considered the bigger picture. The importance of looking after ourselves. Finding ways to be naturally less at risk and working on bettering and improving our own immune system. All of this really questions the limits of Western medicine when it comes to prevention. And we can't help but wonder how much have we been indoctrinated into forgetting that there are actually other alternatives out there. You will be amazed to see what we've discovered and that maybe we might have more control on our health than we're led to believe. A lot of us are going around our natural environment and not noticing the plants around us. And that sort of suggests that we've kind of lost touch with nature. There's a lot of reasons for it, you know, urbanization, the way that healthcare has evolved in Western societies, it's tended to sort of play down the importance of plants, even when they're actually the source of a lot of the medicines that we use. So for example, cancer drugs, you're looking at over half of those would have originally been inspired by natural products. 
We would estimate that around 80% of the global population use natural medicines as their main source of medicines. If you're looking at systems of natural medicine, traditional systems, you obviously have India through Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a term which comes from the Sanskrit Ayas and Veda and it means knowledge of long life and this is achieved through essentially a harmony between the mind, body and soul. It's a life philosophy. Namaste. Namaskar. Namaskar. Namaste. Moi, je, je te trouve classe. Merci. Ouais. Bah, moi, je me trouve classe aussi. Ouais, ouais. Moi, je me trouve plus euh, <rire> Raël, gourou qu'autre chose. On a quitté l'Occident pour partir du côté de l'Asie. On est en Inde pour un sujet qui est tout aussi particulier et différent des autres, puisqu'on va parler de santé. On connaît tous cette fameuse phrase « vaut mieux prévenir que guérir ». Nous en Occident, on aime bien guérir et là-bas, ils aiment bien prévenir. On va parler de Free Medicine Lifestyle, on va parler d'Ayurveda qui est une médecine qui a plusieurs millénaires, qui serait née au Kerala, mais ça c'est un autre débat. On va rencontrer des médecins, des patients et voir un petit peu ce qui se fait ailleurs et des choses qui, ont, qui sont peut-être moins destructives tant au niveau environnemental qu'au niveau santé. On espère vraiment que vous allez kiffer ce, cet épisode puisqu'on va vous emmener l'air de rien dans de magnifiques ah. décors. On va vous faire découvrir un peu le sud de l'Inde. Euh, et puis voilà, ouais. c'est parti Ah, il fait trop bien l'ascenseur I spent 30 years in corporate world. But sometime in 2004, my life took a big turn. My wife was diagnosed with cancer and we did what best we could do in those days. I took her for treatment to US, UK, Australia, Canada. I spent a million dollars for her treatment, but somehow that we lost her. That came out to be a very turning point in my life. Those days I was uh, taking medicines for diabetes, blood pressure, high cholesterol. I was obese. I had 98 kilo of weight. So I decided from that time onwards, I will not take medicine. I'll come out of all my medicines as early as possible. I didn't touch any form of medicine in the last 10 years. And 2010, I came out of diabetes completely, uh, blood pressure, high cholesterol, and I lost about 31 kilo of weight. I came to conclusion that all the health issues has root in your mind. It's where you think, where you behave, where you live life, it has direct impact on your health. We would describe this place as a hailing village. There will not be a single item in this place which does not have in some manner a way that contributes towards Ayurveda or the healing process. Here we have one physician, physician's home and three patient blocks right next to the physician's home so that the physician can look after these 12 patient units or patients as his own family. The definition of science in many dictionaries is systematic observation of natural phenomena to understand facts about them and to create laws and principles based on these facts. That definition fits Ayurveda perfectly. But in modern science, we added further attributes like it should be laboratory tested, it should be animal tested. We started reducing the knowledge of nature into a petri dish, into a beaker, to be viewed under a microscope. Gradually, 
people have moved from being holistic to becoming reductionist. The practice of medicine has changed. I was running a medium-sized hospital for almost 25 years. And at one point of time in my life, I started seeing the failure in my logic, the failure of my science. Allopathy is very good in emergency services. But what happened in last few decades, it has entered your kitchen and your house. Taking drugs become the way of life. Today you go to any doctor, you come out with a prescription outside. You take two, three, four, five medicines. Total allopathy philosophy is based on suppression. We want to fire antibiotics every now and then. People are overburdened with Western medicine, like even if you have a slight headache or even if you sneeze or you cough, you just go and pop a pill, which has tremendous side effects on your body. And they do not actually see the underlying side effects that will affect them in the coming years. Allopathy doesn't understand what environment is. Now today what has happened? Super specialization. Today, the doctor who works with your eyes does not see your nose and the doctor who sees your nose does not see your mouth. They don't see the connection between the three. I mean, I may be pushing a little far, but generally I don't see you as a composite whole and understand that an aggravation or an inflammation in one part of the body can have its uh, manifestation in another part of the body. So what we have done in allopathy, we have broken the human body in spare parts. We don't work in spare parts. And because of that, people are now concerned and they're looking at holistic or alternate way of looking. In May 2015, I got diagnosed with, uh, you know, lymphatic tuberculosis. And the interesting part with the allopathic test and everything is like, it looks like TB, but it is not TB. My question, repeated question to all the allopathic doctors I've met is that if it is not TB and it, and it because of your study it looks like, why am I supposed to take, you know, medicines for TB? The simplest answer was that it's your choice. You want to do it, you do it. There's a six months uh, short, short course of, you know, TB medicine that you take it for six months and you're cured. I was not satisfied with an answer and at that point of time, I had no clue what this place is about and no clue what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is the knowledge of life and longevity. Perhaps the oldest existing body of knowledge on the healing process. And it involves the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the social, the environmental. All of these components contribute to the definition of health. It is a way of life. Whatever we do in our life, that has some effect on our health, whether it is good or bad. In Ayurveda, we study human body with a different way of uh, looking at it. We work on doshas like vata, pitta and kapha. Three elements which is controlling our body, we can tell like that. Something similar to air, fire and water. These are the biological humors of the body, which are the foundational things. When these three are in equilibrium, there is no diseases. When there is an imbalance in these three doshas, that causes some diseases related to uh, that dosha. If any of the imbalanced dosha is there, what we do is, food and regimens are given, and as a result, it gets balanced. The majority of the people are the ones who have gone through the allopathy or the Western medicines and have not found maybe satisfactory results and have come here. And yes, uh, there have been cases of people with cancer who have gone through chemo and then have come here. 14 months ago, I had a diagnosis of bilateral breast cancer, which was a bit of a shock because I thought I was the healthiest 70-year-old on the planet at the time. Whenever a cancer gets manifested, 
the tumor is there so we have to either do chemotherapy we have to excise it do the surgery but they all begin from the point where the tumor has manifested nobody thinks why this tumor has happened to your body ayurved applies its own theories its principles and understands why this particular tumor got emerged in this particular area for this person so then you look at the history of the patient well i kind of looked at my life i realized that there were some black areas gray areas whatever color you want that needed to be looked at continuous negative emotions can create disease this is the kind of thought process we are doing instead of accepting the pain or going through the pain one aspect which determines the uh, the speed in which the healing process can happen to them is their acceptance inside the problem the solution everything is within yourself and you'll find it only if you start looking within yourself first so when i heard this diagnosis my immediate reaction was yes shock absolute shock and then i thought well this is madness if if they cut those tumors out that's the symptom i still have the cause inside me if a tap is open the water is flowing and you have a mop uh, in your hand you just keep mopping but the best solution is to just turn off the uh, tap and then the water will stop so i need to go for the cause remove the cause and then my body which has got an innate healing ability the body has is hardwired to heal itself if we give it the right environment so i need to make, put my body back to being the right environment to create self healing and that's what i set about doing uh, the doctors here said if it's not tb then why you why you have to take a tb medicine and you know we can treat it because it's basically an immunity issue we can improve your journal health then you know this infection can just go away then after 21 days we just made a you know short short plan that you going to stay here for 6 months the ayurveda treatments could be classified into two one is its palliative measures with interim medication daily regimens and food habits which has to be followed the other one is a detoxification program called panchakarmas panchakarma means the five activities to eliminate the doshas in our body they are induced vomiting purgation two kinds of enemas and nasal drops these are the five major procedures used to detoxify our body it is not as easy as i mentioned it has got different phases of treatment first stage is snehanam that is oilation we have to make the body unctuous oily or internal oilation intake of oil so here what we are doing to do is abhyanga abhyanga is the ayurveda treatment where the medicated oil is gently massaged all over the body for a massage we take around 200 ml of oil on a on a gentle massage and these oils are highly medicated <clears throat> sometimes some oils contain 50 60 herbs in that the important part is to transfer the properties of this oil into the body through this process this is what happening with an ayurvedic abhyanga or ayurvedic massage so we give more important for the oil there are hundreds of oil from where which we have to choose one or what the most appropriate oil for this particular condition il a dit il a dit qu'il fallait se concentrer sur ses battements de son cœur et euh, sur la la ah, majorité de mon cœur sur euh, sur les battements de son cœur et de la respiration et euh, moi je le fais très mal parce que faut pas parler du tout dans la session faut être en communion avec le thérapeute et écouter euh, vachement son corps attendre demain matin les effets comme ça de l'huile mais je pense ça va faire un bien fou quand même. Donc euh, voilà quoi. When the oilation happens, the toxins in our body will get separated from the tissues. 
then we have to heat the body. That is called Swedanam, sudation. When we heat the body, as a result of the heat, the toxins get dislodged from its, from its uh, uh, actual position and it will be moving into the intestine. Then these accumulated the toxins are eliminated with the help of induced uh, vomiting, purgation, vasti, etc. After the major procedure, there is a rehabilitation procedures with uh, different kinds of food habits and medication, which is absolutely necessary. What is Ayurveda medicine if you look at? All Ayurvedic medicine are various forms of herbs. Each plant has a medicine value. This is a vada pacifying plant. They chop the leaves into small pieces and fry it in uh, suggested oil by the physician. Pluck any plant. You pluck anything in this universe and you won't find that this is a useless thing. It's up to you to understand what is the use of it. Give it a try. See, I think all of you will be interested in this plant. You are what you eat. So your food contributes a lot in your health. We believe in organic farming. We don't use any chemicals. 80% food we have locally grown. There are so many factors influencing the food, uh, the quality of a food or a drug. That is rasa, the taste, guna, the properties, virya, potency, vibhagam, that is after digestion what happens to it, and prabhavam, some special properties. These are the five factors influencing uh, the property of a uh, medicine, drug or herb, which we take internally or externally. After that one, major one is taste. For easy to understand the taste, there are six tastes told. Sweet, sour, salt, astringent, pungent and bitter. And also for each season, our regimens are different. The misconception people have is about fats. They are scared of fats like anything. No fats are bad, fats are bad. Here we eat lots of fats, but it has to be a non-processed, good quality fats. We Indians used to run our body on fat. The natural fats are good fats. So hydrogenation, trans fat, refining, everything makes fat the bad fat. It has to be in the natural form. So you can eat lots of nuts, you can have lots of oil seeds, you can have cold pressed oils. Nowadays, each and everyone is scared of bacteria we have around 10 times more bacteria on our body than our body cells. Their weight is around 2 to 2.5 kg, kilograms. So it's as good as one organ which is working for you. That bacterial flora is one major part of your immunity as well. They protect your body. So adding good quality of bacteria is very important. All the fermented food are prebiotic, good bacteria. That is one major change. You will see kefir, milk kefir, fruit kefir, kombucha, curd in each and every meal over here. As important hmm. as food, the water, we also understood here that water was extremely important in this program. Okay. <laughs> you are supposed to drink plenty of water. Human being, our pH is 7.4. De mon côté, uh, trop de sel et uh, pas assez d'eau. Now this alkalinity was maintained through the nature, through the springs. Then the food which was coming from the mineral rich soil. When water flows underneath your ground, it is charged water. 
it is charged with negative ions all the minerals available in your ground they are mixed in that water and then you drink that mineral rich ionized water so these minerals are used by your body at almost each and every place but nowadays because of dams because we have covered all the ground with tar and cement water practically doesn't go below the earth surface and then from dam through pipeline to your home that also with added chlorine or fluorine some substance to again kill <laughs> bacteria <laughs> so now the water which was supposed to nourish you is causing some harmful effect rather than nourishment our body is designed alkaline our body ph is 7.4 till the last breath of your life then you have to drink alkaline water which will keep your body in a alkaline environment the best method to make water ionized is a ionizer okay. so there are two electrodes one is a positive and a negative electrode and it is used to electro for electrolysis of the water and the minerals which are in the water naturally this is for acidic water and the bigger jar is for alkaline water the negative electrode actually attracts all the alkaline minerals like calcium magnesium iron potassium which makes it very antioxidant rich lots and lots of minerals are shifted towards the alkaline side and the acidic things like chlorine fluorine are removed so we are actually making spring water with the simple ionizer ça là c'est devenu euh, notre meilleur ami ils nous ont dit euh, entre 3 et 4 litres de flotte donc ça fait combien de ça là voilà 8 voilà donc on va faire 8 pains donc on fait des allers-retours constamment et pour pas que notre piste soit toute jaune Ah, d'abord parce qu'on va parce que c'est bambou the simplest thing that uh, we do in uh, medicine free life is uh, shivambu to uh, help your immunity get to a better level which is basically drinking your you own urine you inject those bacteria to create antibodies and you make yourself immune to those bacteria okay au euh... okay au germe you can control it you can have good food and good water and it won't stink or smell or taste salty or bad le challenge du jour on a été tous demandé euh, dans le village de <laughs> ouais. de boire de mais eux font tous les jours your body will know exactly what you have been exposed to throughout the day and throughout your lives tu bois ça tu réinjectes des microbes et des petits parasites et ça ça immunise ton corps Le même type de microbes qu'on retrouve dans les virus lambda. Donc en fait, ton corps il se dit ah, je me souviens de ce truc, j'en ai bu, donc je produis ce qu'il faut pour m'en débarrasser. Il paraît que ça a le goût de la de l'eau de coco salée, ce que m'a dit la fille. Donc euh... dans le meilleur des cas, je pense dans une piste bien transparente. Merci. Mais on fait quoi plus sec Ah bah oui, plus sec. Oh, putain, attends, <rire> deux secondes. Deux secondes, deux secondes. Deux secondes. Ah 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 Effectivement, ça a le goût salé, c'est salé. Effectivement. T'es le mec le plus ro- le chiant du monde quoi, tu viens de boire ta piste genre Effectivement, c'est salé. bah quoi c'est, c'est, c'est un peu salé Bah grave, j'ai bu des trucs plus dégueulasses que ça Genre, t'as bu des trucs plus dégueulasses que de la piste Ouais, bah, y a des co- bah franchement le morito qu'on a... <rire> non pas le morito, le petit mari qu'on a bu à San Francisco ouais. Pour moi c'est plus dégueulasse que ça Mais franchement, allez voir juste sur Youtube par curiosité l'urinothérapie et allez voir les vertus que l'urine a Qu'est-ce que t'as vu le plus vieux médicament du monde Ouais. Bon, allez voir. Qu'on a envie de voir. Putain, je te jure, j'ai l'impression de puer de la gueule. Ouais. C'est franchement pas terrible. Mais ceci dit, ça pointe un, un fait quand même euh, euh, non euh, négligeable, qui est que je bois pas assez d'eau, quoi. <rire> Ouais mais c'est le matin, c'est la piste du matin. On, ouais, on, m'a, le matin on m'a dit hier que la bière c'était pas considéré comme de l'eau. Alors là vous imaginez le choc. Putain, vache. Bref, il est 6h du matin et là on va faire du, du yoga en haut de la colline.
nowadays because of sedentary lifestyle there is tremendous lack of exercise this body is designed not only to walk but to run to climb to bend to be flexible to be muscular so that exercise part is very important to incorporate and so we they go through interval intensive training that is cardio they go through strength training they go to flexibility training that is yoga so all of that and they learn how to incorporate all of this in their day daily routine quite easily i want to encourage people to live a very healthy lifestyle it's not really difficult even as a patient when you go to a doctor you should always question why i have got diabetes why i have got blood pressure why till you don't address the root cause you are going to be on lifelong medication i advocate this i say this to my patients if they don't question me why i have got fever or why i have got diabetes i make them ask do you know why this has happened when i did my first consultation here i could just feel the, that you know no doctor have ever spoken to me like this in terms of individualized healing when you come here and the amount of attention is been given to each case you know where the patient is looked after and you know seen day to night and being observed throughout days and you know for number of period the patient was given care either in the physician's home or in the patient's home where you are surrounded by people who care for you everyone here does everything lovingly they're smiling and wonderful and friendly and fantastic and you just feel that love coming from them the doctors are doctors and yet you know you can really talk to them it's a world away from medicine in the uk when you've got 10 minutes and if you're lucky you're out the door June 2016 when I went through again one round of tests and my test results were good I could see myself being cured and I say how can I help and you know how can I give it back We have had many of the patients who want to come back and settle here and they want to participate in the activities over here so we have started a project where there is housing for those people who want to uh, work in the community it gave me a sense of satisfaction and a sen sense of completion how i want to live my life you know the question has changed over the period of time yeah he's been an allopath surgeon for 30 years to say that everything that i've learned till date is wrong is a very courageous thing to do and i've not seen very many doctors do it we want to show some alternatives to the people you can live very pretty decent life without raping the nature use the science in positive way also you can't treat a human body in isolation you have to treat in wholesome mind body and soul i've known three people in the last 3 to 4 years young enough to be my children and younger who all had cancer who all had all the treatment who then had the second cancer had all the treatment and none of them are here now none of them i believe that natural medicine and western medicine can exist together and complement one another 3 weeks ago i had a scan and guess what the scan showed a reduction in the tumors no spread no lymph so none of the threats nothing's happened people on the first second third fourth day they see and they understand i feel unbelievably different i'm back to feeling myself and i'm here and i couldn't be in a better place i didn't look upon cancer as an enemy or a curse i've never been afraid of it i saw this as a a gift like a kick up the backside if you like to get out to go and do something be intuitive stay in touch with yourself being consistent and give that commitment to yourself because if you believe in that what you are doing 
it's really going to work for you. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. Oh, hey, Rita. You look <laughs> Lovely great. to see you both. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Rita. See you, Rita. <laughs> see you, Rita. Okay. Well, Rita, first of all, like, let's let's start simple. But generally, like, how are you? How are you doing? Well, given that we've just had a year of being virtually prisoners in our own homes, um, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'd say. Uh, I had that grows cancer tumors in both breasts. The prognosis um, they gave me was horrendous. <laughs> you know, absolutely horrendous. So it was a, one breast had to be removed and the other one could possibly, but maybe a lumpectomy would do the job. And I'd need you know, radiation and chemo and all the rest of it. And my, 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 you know, my head just blurred, uh, like, can't be serious. If you just take out the tumours, you're basically leaving me with the cause. And all you've done is remove the symptom. So I declined. I said, no, thank you. I'll sort it out myself. It was looks of shock and horror over absolutely everyone's faces. And, you know, I was definitely going to die if I didn't have I said, no, I won't. <laughs> I won't. And it's now over four years now. It's four years and three, two, three months since I had that diagnosis. My health is pretty good because, you know, I've had a lot against me. Last January, when I had my check then, they did a, 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 an MRI scan. It was a very nice South Indian doctor. Uh, that was that again. He he, it was, he he described it as static. I said that's fine, <laughs> that's fine. I will carry on doing what I'm doing. One of the things I will say is that when I was when my by, when I was going to the oncologist, I was trying very hard to explain to her what I was doing. She did not want to know. Uh -huh. She didn't want to hear anything I had to say. And, the, and I'm not knocking the National Health Service or the because you know, when it comes to things like, you know, if you break your leg you know, or you have an accident, yes, thank you very much indeed. You're really grateful for the National Health. But people use it for everything. And um, I think that's a big, a big mistake. Prevention is a lot better than cure. We're much more powerful as beings than, than, we, than we've ever been led to believe. This is way back beyond before pandemics. <laughs> I mean, to be perfectly honest, I actually believe if I'd had surgery, if I needed help, I wouldn't have got it. And I mm -hmm. truly don't think I would have survived. So that's where we're at. <laughs> so I, as far as I'm concerned, everything's going along according to plan. Let's wrap. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>